You know him. He's an investor uh, who went public months ago with his growing frustrations over Meta's spending and its focus. Brad Gerstner is his name. He is the founder and CEO of Altimeter Capital. It's good to see you again. Uh, boy, have times changed. I guess they listened to you. Well, it's great to be here, Scott. And, you know, far from listening to me, you know, I, as you remember, I said at the time, this wasn't just a message to, uh, to Meta or to Facebook or to Mark. It was really a message to all of us coming out of the zero rate world where we hired excessively, this age of excess. And I think I have to start by just saying credit where credit's due. I mean, that was an incredible call, incredible turnaround in terms of management by Mark, by Susan, the team, by the entire board, by Mark Andreessen, Drew, Tony, Sheryl Sandberg. You don't see companies at this scale with that agility. Mm -hmm. um, and what we heard last night was a significant change, and I think it's really important to understand that Mark said this isn't one and done. The headline of the call was efficiency. The second headline of the call was AI. This company is in a position to get more inventive, more agile, more fast in terms of its invention around AI as a result of what they did yesterday. Mentioned efficiency 18 times, mentioned AI 22 times. This brings into balance what this company uh, it was all about. It's an AI first company, more an AI company than it is a VR company. Um, and Mark said he himself was surprised as they got into this process. He thought that efficiency was just about hitting a profit objective, but discovered that actually it made people happier, right? The best developers in the world want to work in places where they see their products, they see their inventions get launched, where things are moving faster. He talked last night, there's more work to be done around middle management, et cetera. They have a hiring freeze on in the company. I think this is not only great for Meta, but it's really leadership for all of Silicon Valley and all of technology in how we can move forward in a way that capitalizes on all these great uh, developments in AI, but does so responsibly in a balanced way that brings owners, developers, all the stakeholders along for the ride. You know, Kramer called it today a, a transformational call for shareholders. I mean, but let's let's be honest, you know, you doubted in in some regard that they would get to this day. And if they were going to get to this day, I think it's fair to say you weren't so sure that it was going to be as fast as they apparently have found religion on the issues that made you so uncomfortable. Not, you know, a couple handfuls of months ago. Well, you know, as you know, um, you know, I, I, I think that. I was constructive all along. We have a big position. It's one of our biggest positions. Of course, as a shareholder, when we go through what we went through last year, where growth stocks multiples are compressing, where revenue is decelerating, they had their first year of negative revenue growth in 2022. And I, I might say that, like the Fed, they were a little slow to adapt in the first part of the year. But man, did they, did they really turn that around? And what I'm most excited about in the future is not the fact that you're going to go from 86,000 employees to 75,000 employees. But I was really happy last night to hear Mark say that it's made the place fun again, that people are getting excited about being able to do things faster. Because when you compress the layers in an organization, you get to more productivity. And that's really what this is about. The next five to 10 years, they're one of the best positioned companies to capitalize on this move to AI. He said last night, that they're going to thread the LLMs, you know, these models which sit at the heart of AI. They're going to thread generative AI through all of their products, right? That is significant. And he also said, listen, we haven't achieved, we, we, yes, we had a reduction in force, but that wasn't the end state. We still have a hiring freeze and we still have a ways to go. I mean, remember, Oculus itself has more employees in it. Reality Labs has more employees than Netflix, right? So, all of Silicon Valley, they doubled, they tripled the number of employees over the last several years. So there's a real opportunity now to grow for years without dramatically increasing the size uh, of these workforces. And we heard that loud and clear last night.